Check it, J25's leading. We kick it off strong. Block drifting extraordinaire in a zone never wrong. Cream was on point, tail slick and quick. High end wisdom plans, every line sticks. Orange cubicle crew, we're setting the tone. One, two outs, flow breaks, carving its own. Yo, hands got queries, hard hitting smart. Questions that probe deep straight to the heart. Orange cubicle, with a voice to choice. Every story celebrated, make some noise. Jenny's in the mix, she's playing a part. We all now's and vibes, crafting art. Tune in, vibe out, feel the beat, get the clout. This is the crew, that's what we about. Story spark. Yeah, all right, welcome back to the Orange Cubicle. This week we've got Elmo Saves of Orange Cube. Good branding, right on, right on uh, track with us. And the first artist of their collection, Tan Tan. So we just want to dive into what's going on with this up and coming. What would you call it? A collective Elmo, or how are you trying to frame it? It's a curated art house. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so it's like more or less kind of like a collective. Uh, it's very like small, kind of boutiquey. Uh, mainly dealing in like web three kind of art, you know, specifically awesome. inscribed on on Bitcoin on chain. Yeah, and so I think uh, you and Hype bumped into each other in in New York. Was that how you guys started chatting a little bit more? Or can you give us a little insight I mean, into that? Yeah, to a certain degree, right? I like I I uh, obviously like some of the first experiences that I had in the uh, ordinal space was like coming to OSD spaces, and so um, so naturally like when i met up with him in new york it was like oh it was kind of fucking exciting uh but yeah we we mobbed deep with a bunch of puppets uh and whatnot and went to a lot of events and had a lot of fun there and when i came back i was just like yeah these are my people like these are the people that i've had with so yeah that's kind of that's kind of how we linked up for sure nice yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, I was right next to Elmo. We were like outside of the hotel, everybody smoking, and so like, oh, Elmo, I'm like, oh shit, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, seeing Elmo around, us, especially in like the blessed spaces, and then uh, I guess blessed took like his a uh, little week off, two weeks, three weeks off, and uh, took a break from spaces, and Elmo's been around just chilling, hanging in there, actually like straight DJ mode. Uh, <laughs> the dude like hangs. Mm -hmm. He knows how to. He knows how to hang in there, especially with the uh, all the mania around runes. And yeah, shout out Elmo. Shout out Tan Tan too for just you know being there in the presence, watching all this unfold, and reminding Elmo to uh sell your runes every day. <laughs> every day. The artists need funding. Artists need funding. <laughs> Yeah, for real, for real. No, I, I've, I've sold some BRC20s to, to help bankroll and kind of like bootstrap this uh, Orange Cube project, which has been, you know, like, honestly, a fucking blessing, like looking back at it. Um, but yeah, I mean, dude, um, like I, I got started uh, in Web3, like back in the day, kind of like meeting Tantan in the Tezos space. Uh, she was a Tezos artist there. There was like a um, nice little uh community there called burritos and uh and like i found a space one day that was called like burritos and scams and um from there i was just like okay let's see what these people are about and uh there were just like a bunch of like degen artists hanging around talking about art and um and listening to george michael and like steamrolling <laughs> people every now and then with like careless whispers and i was like okay this is the vibe i fuck with this and like from there things just kind of like matured um, we ended up, uh, catching the attention of like some fairly serious artists, which ended up kind of like taking the time out of their day to start, you know, teaching us what they knew about the art world, which then kind of like, uh, matured not only like my collecting habits, but, um, a lot of the artists that kind of were in that space, their, their art, you know, definitely benefited and matured from those kind of conversations that existed there. Unfortunately, nowadays, a lot of those people are just kind of like unaware of what's going on on Bitcoin. Um, they're more caught up with like, you know, their day to day lives. They have real careers. So uh, they're they're off doing their real career stuff. And um, naturally, Tan Tan and I are, are still kind of like degening. And um, and when we saw what was happening uh, here in the ordinal space, specifically uh, Bless and um, Far were both very adamant in like grabbing our attention, trying to like kind of like get us to look at what was going on in the ordinal space. And when we finally took the time to like check that out, we realized that there was something that was like super, super interesting here. 
Um, and Tantan had already been kind of like working on this idea of, of publishing some work um, and inscribing some work on Bitcoin. And um, and when I saw what was happening and like I saw kind of like the the, the head of like a lot of these collectors that were in the ordinal space, how they kind of like gravitated towards like that real shit, like almost almost like you would see um, real vinyl collectors kind of uh, gravitating towards like, you know, the authentic, uh, you know, like OG kind of, of stuff, uh, the OG kind of medium stuff. Um, I was like, okay, I, I felt like uh, the ordinal space was a great place to essentially launch my own curation platform. And it's not like a marketplace or anything like that. Uh, it's just something more or less kind of uh, catered to uh, me picking out a handful of artists that I, I think are very promising and work well with not only like the medium of blockchain itself, but like are pushing the boundaries technologically and um, visually on some of their works um, and conceptually as well. Uh, and, and trying to, you know, uh, basically promote their work and um, elevate their work to a status that I feel like other people would appreciate. Uh, so that's when I came up with Orange Cube, assembled like a small team of about seven people that um, are currently working uh, totally for free, um, just entirely seeing the vision on this and wanting to be a part of this. And they've been cracked, man. Like uh, the Discord devs, the front and back end devs, like all of them fucking amazing. Uh, people helping us out with the community, moderators, like all these people uh, just knocking out of the park. And it's been a lot of fun so far. Tan Tan, how are you feeling about the Orange Cube and the initiative uh, on Bitcoin and everything? Honestly, it's been really interesting because I usually don't work well with other people. People have said that I'm uh, batshit crazy. So <laughs> it's, it's kind of cool because I was kind of nervous. I was like, Elmo's just going to hate me after this. You know, we've been friends for like four years and this is going to be the end of it because you'll be like, that's insane. Um, but I'm glad that didn't happen and it's just been really fun. Uh, also, like, it's kind of really humbling too because like I would just like call him up and say, Elmo, no one's going to get my work. I think it's it's just not going to be well, you know, you're just like pouring all this money. I don't, I don't know. And he would just be like, <clears throat> Tan Tan, I believe in your work. Everyone, you know, in the Orange Cube believes in your work. So, yeah. So it's been a wild ride. Uh, honestly, kind of surprising for me. Uh, I'm glad that it's working out. Um, yeah, cool. So, yeah. Also, side note, uh, Tan Tan assured me that if this does not go out well, uh, if it doesn't work out well, that her family is going to be adopting me. So, I mean, that was a solid insurance uh, plan for me personally. Um, so, obviously, I, I was totally down to go go <laughs> all in. <night. laughs> um, yeah, I thought you were going to say if this doesn't work out well, I believe Tan is going to commit to Piku or whatever that's no, called. No, no. <laughs> please no <laughs> please no please no <laughs> please no yeah um having like tan tan as a genesis artist i feel is uh is great because now i feel like there's a boundary that she set because her piece is pretty fire it's like the next artist that i don't know if you're i guess have you already i guess you have like a lineup or a roster ready or do you kind of just flow through it like oh uh next like next next month maybe i find somebody or is it like you have a whole curated roster i mean so far i have uh not only tan tan but i have three other artists that i i plan to be working with with orange cube and doing releases and i was a little bit hesitant on on like i didn't want to like create plans for us to like release so and so and this and that and whatever because like a lot of these people are still working on their work and you know the rumor obviously was that the mempool was going to be like sitting at like 10,000 sats per v bytes for like months and months and months and never going to come back to normal and right now we're seeing it normalize a little bit so uh that makes me feel a lot more optimistic um with with helping a lot more artists uh kind of get their work through but yeah no we have a roster of uh of, of three other artists outside of tantan that we'd like to work with um that are like totally on board 
um, really excited and working on some stuff. You've seen some of them actually come around the space, but uh, I'm just going to let you guys kind of guess on that. I don't want to give you too much yet. Uh, but yeah, no, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be exciting. Yeah, I mean, man, pool fees right now are like as low as 42 sat V bytes, and you guys well, had work inscribed at uh, what 60 sat V bytes? Huh? I remember you guys stressing out, like, we got to get it in, we got to get it in. Dude, we were, I think we inscribed some of like, like our pieces at like 95, not even. Yeah, yeah, yeah we did, we did. Mm. It was. It was wild. I was pretty adamant about that because I was afraid. I didn't want to risk it, you know? And I was like, you know what? Tan Tan just pushed this shit through. Uh, <laughs> Dan Dan was like, dude, don't. Like, we should wait. And I was like, no, just do it, dude. I'm not playing around. Fuck this. Like, let's go. Um, but, yeah, we have some stuff set, uh, you know, put out there at, like, 95 sats per V-byte. But most of them are around 40 to 60. Yeah, for around that range, which was still pretty high because I inscribed some of the dependencies for my pieces, for my games at like eight, 10 sets. So like the heavier files are mostly inscribed at like eight, 10. It's just like everything that's, you know, gonna come together, which HTML and all the recursive, st uh, you know, modules that, were, that I was using. Um, that's kind of like the end part of like building blocks, right? Like Legos. So that was the uh, that was the end. But it was really fun. Kinda. It was really stressful. Most. That of might be a good segue for you to talk about your work a little bit, Tan Tan. Yeah, like, I was. Uh, I was curious because I believe this was uh, your first time doing digital work, right? Like you previously hadn't done any of this. You've been learning it all. No, um, I mean, okay, so I started generally, if you like look through my work and on Instagram, I started out as a Flemish painter. Okay. Uh, so I was really interested in old masters and like this thing called Flemish painting, which is you paint the painting in like three layers. So you have an underpainting, a first painting layer and a second painting. And I was like really obsessed with it for like, I don't know, three, four years. Uh, I actually kind of like got really sick because of all of this. But um, after that, I kind of moved towards like digital work. So if you see past, like, like moving, like before this, before like actually get, getting into games, I would do, I would like combine two um, of my favorite um, aesthetics, which is academic um, painting and, like manga characters. So I would usually like try to combine them in a digital format, animating it and everything. Then uh, like after that, I got into like game design. So um, I would usually like before this, like HTML, CSS and JavaScript, uh, I mostly am familiar with C++ and C Sharp, which, which are like more game engine based um, coding languages. So Unity and like Unreal Engine. So when uh, when like Far hit me up like December and he's like, dude, you should do one of your softwares. I I have released one software, um, one software game. It's an RPG game um, on the on blockchain on Tezos. But he's like, dude, you should do one of uh, those um, on Bitcoin. I was like, okay, but the file size limit is kind of scary for me because I'm like used to working with huge, huge file size like unreal engine like goes up to 100 gb uh worth of like just just you know like files games and even unity like my previous game was like 100 mb which is which is honestly i kind of optimize it so it's not that bad but still uh, on bitcoin it would be kind of impossible to bridge that over um that's why i started learning like HTML and optimization techniques for, for especially for CSS and JavaScript, how I can like format my document and everything. Uh, and that's like how I came to like think about things on things on blockchain as like digital archaeology mostly and how my software and games kind of revolve around that topic. Hopefully I'm not rambling, but <laughs> no, I just remembered you talking about you being a physical painter. So that was what I was trying to connect. So this first piece is it's the reality dot uh, exe, right? Yeah, that's the first piece. The second piece in the series uh, is called reality is broken. 
Um, mm -hmm. so it's, well, it's very it's, cool, you know, rotating in the middle. You know, you got a lot going on here, obviously. Um, definitely looking forward to the other pieces coming. Are you, are you said you're doing three total? Um, okay, so first one, uh, they're kind of like a series, like my body of work. So one first one was 404 Reality Not Found. That's all Rian Tezos. Mm -hmm. These two are an extension of that. So it's okay. kind of in one universe, the, the games. Also, like one oh, another one is coming, but that's that won't be on like Bitcoin. It's like an Unreal Engine based, like Epic Games and Steam uh based game. Like so. a DLC package or something. Yeah, yeah, probably. Okay. Right on. Very cool. So can you give us like just the TLDR, like broad strokes of what your your game or like uh your universe is all about? Um, okay, so like with reality is broken and reality.exe kind of, as I said, are an extension of a larger artistic endeavor title for a for reality not found. It kind of explodes like digital archaeology and like kind of like how like internet capacity to reclaim heritage artifacts and identi identities into the core gameplay. So uh, I wanted to connect because I'm like a really traditional artist at core. Like that's that's like most of my background and only like for the past three years that uh, two years I got into like gaming and game development. Um, so for like most part of my artistic journey um, is trying to bridge the gap between um, like like antiquity, like how you would have like churches, right? I wanted to try to say like, like these days as artists, as like people, and at least my generation kind of view like the idea of experiencing gaming as a profound, um, profound endeavor, which is kind of, kind of like somehow like connected to uh, people in the past going to churches, right? So it's kind of, how should I say it? it is the, the tradition of, um, you know, transposing people into uh, like illusionary spaces, what not was not really, um, you know, was not really born or invented uh, by the computer. Instead, it was grounded in a solid art historical tradition whose core idea reaches back to antiquity. So that's kind of like the the whole thing about um, reality dot broken reality exe and four or four reality. I don't know. If, I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah, yeah it sounds know. interesting. Oh, what are your thoughts on the piece overall, um, dude? I mean, I think it's fucking killer, dude. I, I think it's insane. I think not only does like the actual like concept behind the work uh i think fit like the core um culture that i've seen propagated here on bitcoin which is like one reason why i was like dude tan tan would be perfect like that would be a great release you know um and and also it's like i i you know i i i feel like uh tan tan is an incredibly talented artist but artists need help uh promoting and um you know having people like advocate for their work and other things out there and and that's you know something that i'm i'm very passionate about so uh, that's always nice but i mean obviously i think the work itself is just it's killer like not only is it like visually um stunning and probably some of the coolest shit that i've ever seen on bitcoin but like uh like the functionalities all the stuff that she's baked into it like i can't even go into like you guys that it's already out there you guys can play the game mess around with it tinker with it figure out these things for yourself um, but like, there's some things that are built into that, um, that are pretty outstanding. And I think like no other project is really done. So it's definitely a first of its kind. Um, so yeah, I'm excited, dude. I'm excited. Will, will you be encouraging Tan Tan to put like, uh, not coded work, but like actual, I guess like the work that I'm looking on Instagram because uh, Tan Tan yesterday you mentioned your Instagram I did a deep <laughs> dive into it and I'm like yo um this is insane like you're actually going through the fundamental and I guess like you went to school for this or can you kind of break down how this art journey started mm, and how you I got you caught you like how did you get yourself in like messing with art it all started with Uguro. It all started with Uguro. <laughs> Anime? 
That too. Um, I all think roads lead to anime. All roads essentially <laughs> would be. That is true. Anime, One Piece, Berserk. I uh, fucking love it. Okay, I don't want to go into it. I uh, concentrate on my work. The, you, you don't want to get me started. Hyde knows it. I've been <laughs> rambling. Yeah, uh, a lot. But okay, so with, with my... Uh, I started out like from my schooling and like my college was more to do with the commercial side of art uh, and not like the fine art side of art. So it wasn't like academic painting. Um, it was more about thinking about like mangas and anime. And I for like the longest time wanted to be in wanted to be a manga artist. So I actually applied for like Shonen Jump, which they kind of like fucking uh, rejected me because it's a really hard industry to get into, one of the hardest to get into. It's really, also it's really competitive, the amount of work that like, you know, manga artists put and like, yeah, it's kind of nuts. But uh, that was my like first ta start. But I think I was like in New Zealand for like a couple of years after, um, I kind of went through college and there was a huge renaissance fair about like old master paintings. So there's like Caravaggio uh, from like Mannerist to Baroque to high renaissance artists, like amazing, amazing. And I was like floored. I was like, this is, it also made me as an artist feel really small. I was like, you know, I'm not as good, you know, I'm never gonna be as good as them. <laughs> these guys like really like, you know, put, put you know, their heart, the soul and like, you know, a bit of like a romanticist kind of view, but still that kind of um, like humbled me a lot as an artist because I was like, oh, I'm like really good at blah, blah, blah. But these, these motherfuckers were really good at everything that they did. Um, so yeah, like after that, I was like, fuck the commercial side of like, art right I don't want to do that I just want to focus on like like learning what these old masters did so I started um yeah uh I started like waking up at like three like it's still really fun so yeah I started waking up like three in the morning would just hit the studio would like read lots of books on how to do this and um it was really kind of crazy but I was really obsessed with it and after like I learned those skills of like you know fine art painting and Flemish painting it kind of became boring in sort of like a sense so I was like oh like I I know how to do this now now what right what do I say with those skills that I have now which was interesting because it kind of made me feel that I was not connected to my generation, that I wasn't speaking to my generation if I was using oil paintings as a medium, um, which made me move more towards like digital work that kind of, you know, transformed into me going like headfirst into video game development. So it's been, it's been a ride, but also like after like learning. So that, that's what I really love about video games. I think like when I started first getting into it, I was on a call with Elmo and all of my friends on Discord. We had this really weird group called like Burritos. And we would, watch, we would literally watch like binge watch anime and like UFC fights. And, yeah. like, <laughs> I guess we could kind of get into that. Like uh the you guys meeting like i know the story but the listeners mm. here don't know the story so break down how you and uh you tan tan and elmo met um, well i already told my side of the story but tan tan can can she can uh, uh, i think like that that's it like i met elmo's like me and my friend flynn um we we would host these burritos uh, you know, spaces, which was really just fun. We were just like talking around and we would just host these, I don't know, 72 hour, kind of like you, Hype. It was total like a DJ mode. I think you're like, like you're a bit too much even for like when we were in our DJ mode, you <laughs> were insane, but uh, in a good way. Okay. I don't mean it. Yeah. Disrespect by it. But uh, so yeah. we would... <laughs> we would host these spaces and Elmo kind of showed up and it was really fun because yeah he would just kind of throw me under the bus every time he would just like like yeah <laughs> that, that was, 
he would ju- also he would send me every time he would like just talk shit he would just send me like a gif of like family i think it was family guy right or what, no what it's south it? park it's it's the oh, gif where cartman gets thrown underneath the bus and so i'd talk shit and i'd do something to intentionally throw underneath the bus at clueless <laughs> And then, like, shoot her a gif every single time. She'd be like, you motherfucker, I can't believe you. <laughs> it's so funny. But, yeah, it is really fun. Then we started, we had this whole group, and there were a lot of, like, contemporary artists. That kind of also made me, like, as an artist, it made me grow so much because I thinking started thinking about my work even more critically. So, okay, so, for example, I think about learning a new skill as an anime art right i'm like in my whole training arc zone and i'm like learning these new skills and there's this guy amir that would show up and he would just say say to everyone you you your work is shit right and he would give us like a whole slew of like pointers how it can be improved you know and i really respect him and he would just like really good feedback from a critical perspective of an artist who's been in the game for so long, who's been in museums. So it was kind of like making me think about my work even more critically. I mean, he's like skeptical about everything. So, you know, you you need to take it with a grain of salt, but it was so much fun. I kind of really enjoy when people shit on me. It's kind of like a thing. So I I enjoy that a lot. It made me grow. (laughs) You like the negative reinforcement? Okay. I love it. Dude, honestly, like, you got to be careful. You can't give her too many uh, compliments because I've actually seen her, like, twice in my life uh, get actually physically ill uh, from people giving her too many compliments. So be careful. Hold on. What do you mean by this? Tantan, you got to clarify what physically <laughs> ill means. Um, it's kind of weird because uh, I just feel like if people are being too nice, that they want something from me. Like, do you know what I mean? So it's just weird. So I would rather have just people talk shit, you know, like to me. Um, I would just say this. This is not like reading in burritos. Fuck you, Tan Tan. So I kind of, yeah, I just, yeah, it's just better. I feel it's like more about like family then. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, yeah. That, that makes um, sense. <laughs> so uh, Elmo, um, on the orange cube, let's say there's an artist. How does an artist, like, let's say Orange Cube gets big. Is there a, a time in space where Orange Cube will accept submissions for artists? Or do you have any plans of that? Or are you just going to curate this based on, like, what you like on your style? Or is it more of a curation based on the overall team? Well, it, uh, that's a good question. Uh, I mean, like, cur- curation is obviously kind of, like, a very tricky task. A lot of people like to refer to it as like gatekeeping and all that stuff, which to be, you know, completely honest with you. Yeah. That's kind of what it is. Right. Cur- curation is, is a bit gatekeeping in nature. Um, but like, I, ultimately at the end of the day, like what I'm currently trying to do is I'm trying to build something up. That's like special enough that like artists that do release with orange cube feel like they've accomplished something. Right. And, um, and, and, on in that two-way street because it's not just about the artists uh, it's not just about the the business it's also about the collectors right in in that two-way street i want collectors to feel like they really know that whatever we're releasing is going to be top notch like hands down right so currently right now i'm i'm pulling artists that i know i do have a huge rolodex of artists that i know um and i've, I've worked in the web3 art space for quite some time and i'm out here in la very plugged into that scene uh where some of the best exist but I'm also like exploring uh, the Bitcoin uh, art, you know, uh, scene as well, right? And there isn't that many players that are in there um, that are like very serious players. Uh, there's a lot of people out here that are just kind of like putting their work on chain and trying to immortalize it and whatnot. But then there's like a handful of people that are very serious that I that are creating things that I feel like are like groundbreaking, uh, like Nolish. Um, you know, uh, obviously Billy Resty is pretty solid um Rax Rax is pretty killer as well um some of the stuff that I've seen from him is insane but um as far as like actually having submissions for a collaboration we're we're not currently at that position um but if anybody's you know like feels like they should that I should be aware of their art I have absolutely no problem with people like hitting me with the DM 
tagging me in a post, like whatever. Um, Cause I'm, I, there's so much art there out there that there could be, you know, a, a killer groundbreaking artist that I'm not aware of that I would hate to pass by because I, you know, I'm, they're just under my radar. Right. So um, like I said, like not right now, I'm not going to be like opening the submissions things, but it's like, if you guys want to give me, get, get my attention, like tag at Elmo saves in your work, right. Uh, tag at Elmo saves and any artists, like, and even collectors of a certain artist, like if they really feel like their work is like groundbreaking, like tag me in their shit so I can be aware of it. Um, and I think that's the easiest way for me to kind of like go about just kind of re researching things, you know, in my own kind of natural way, instead of like beating the bushes and like going, I don't know. I, I just like it to be somewhat like natural, you know, to a certain degree. Yeah. Now you have like an interesting kind of background. I don't know if you want to kind of more so speak about your background and like your time spending um, in the military and like how like you got yourself here like you know in the art section of things like it's just fascinating to me because I, I hear this story of your background and I'm like, like how did you get yourself in like to the arts Um, so I kind of want to know like how'd you got yourself in the art of like do you make art I know you told us no but like do you make art you possibly do you possibly don't or like whatever you consider art Um, so yeah just like tell us Tell us how you got yourself here, Elmo. Word. Well, I mean, like, my, like, family is very artistic. My mom, uh, she used to own, like, a dance art studio. Um, so I grew up around, like, you know, like a performing arts studio for quite some time. Um, my grandmother is a painter. Uh, if you go to, I'm not going to mention where it's at, but, like, there's a specific city in California where she has literally every corner of this city painted. Like, every fucking corner. Um, every house is like, got her murals on it. It's pretty wild. Um, but like, it, it's definitely in my blood, but would I go out of my way to say I'm some sort of artist? No, I've tried my hand at painting. I've tried my hand at like a number of different things. I'm not, I'm not actually terrible. I've shown Tan Tan some of my paintings stuff or whatever, but it's not anything that I would like, feel like it's worth my time honing my focus in on. Um, I think really what I am really good at is spotting uh, underappreciated things and um, highlighting them in such a way that people, you know, start to take notice of it, right? And I think there's an art in that to a certain degree. Um, but yeah, but I'm, I'm not particularly an artist. Uh, so yeah, so like I grew up with a bunch of people that were kind of like artistically inc inclined, but I would always go to um, like art museums, kind of like as I got older uh, in my 20s, my early 20s, I, uh, after the military, uh, which... I was a combat medic in the military for three and a half years with the Marine Corps, uh, which was interesting. But once I got done with that, I started taking life a little bit slower, went to college. Uh, while I was at college, kind of tried to, you know, take things slow and uh, learn new stuff. And that kind of led me into going to art museums on occasion and um, taking interest in art stuff. But I really had no idea what the fuck it meant, right? All the while I was out you know, trading in the stock market and, and dabbling in crypto as well. Um, and then like eventually like one thing led to another. And like I said, uh, I stumbled upon burritos, which then kind of like took me on this whole journey uh, through the art world. But from there, I mean, I, I, I was living in Boise, Idaho for like a few years, um, actually 13 years. Uh, so way more than a few, but uh, I, the, our friend Amir, the one that, uh, Tantan -tan was talking about kept on calling me every day and saying that I needed to move out to LA if I was serious about the art stuff. Um, and I was like, dude, that's never going to happen. Sorry. I'm not operating my life. Like I, I live in like Idaho. I, I pay like 500 bucks a month for my apartment. Um, I've been seeing this girl for like three years or whatever. And I'm like, I'm not trying to uproot my life. And then like the next day there was like a knock on my door. The landlord was like, Hey, we're selling the place. Um, and then like, I went to contact the the girlfriend at the time to be like, oh, you'll never guess how my day's been. And she didn't pick up the phone, found out she was cheating on me with some other guy. And I'm like, oh, okay, all right, I guess I'm moving to LA. Um, so I moved to LA like a, uh, about two years ago now. Um, and just like from there, like I said, I was paying like 500 bucks a month at my, uh, at my apartment in Idaho. And I was like, dude, if I'm going to be paying like fucking four times that much 
here in LA plus cost of living for food and everything, I'm literally going to hit every art event because here in LA, like art events are very free and they're very accessible. Right. Um, so I just like took it upon myself to like hit every art event, go to like every art opening, every museum, uh, whether it be digital or like traditional and contemporary, I, I just immersed myself in that culture. Um, and also the, like the web three culture um, and whatnot and like in NFT space and crypto space and whatnot. Um, so yeah, like every day, like I was just out here doing something and that eventually led me to getting a job with Cactoid Labs, which uh, they did a project with LACMA uh, where they ended up working with a handful of artists on Ethereum um, and getting some of their work collected into LACMA's collection. Um, and then that also led me to work with Arsenal Art, which is a digital subsidiary of the Artist Rights Society. Um, and they're killer. Like the Artist Rights Society has been around for 35 years. Uh, they handle like all the IP and licensing for uh, all the biggest artists in the world, for the most part, um, like 150,000 different names, uh, names like the Warhol Foundation, uh, Picasso, Salvador Dali. I mean, and those are some of the most notable names, but like you can go to their website, check it out. They have a whole list of them and it's pretty insane. But yeah, I worked for them, uh, both those companies doing community management stuff, just kind of like not only getting to know the collectors on that side, um, but also figuring out how to like work behind the scenes with museums or other like uh, institutions. And then also, um, just kind of working on developing my connections with like uh, media outlets and um, you know other people within this space. So yeah, it was it was just kind of like more or less like a time for me to like figure out how this kind of business and how this stuff actually works. And to be honest with you, at the end of the day, uh, when I tried to draw their attention to what was going on in the ordinal space, and they were kind of like mm, indifferent about it, I was like, fuck it, I think I can do this better than you guys because. <laughs> To be entirely fucking honest with you, dude, I kept the fucking lights on in both of those businesses for the entire time that I was working there. Uh, did all their tweets, did everything, all their community management. Those people would fuck off for like months, weeks sometimes, you know, and like just leave me holding the keys. And so I was like, why don't I just do that for myself instead of getting paid pennies on the dollar to basically run these people's business? Why they give me like, you know, 5% of whatever they net. It's like a joke, right? um so i think yeah. kramer can relate to that well, really yeah oh yeah for sure man what uh, what were you doing uh i mean dude I, I worked in the film business for like over 20 years uh the last few years i was just uh working in some corporate media job in a marketing department just directing and editing and shooting all their like their content for all their brands but just uh the, the environment in the in in that industry right now is just like tanking right now mm -hmm. so um but yeah i just uh it's just i mean i'm, I'm like a I, I do crypto you know on the side and everything that's been one of my hobbies and we've been hitting it really hard uh with brc 20s and ordinals and dude i just wish i i wish i would have quit my job like six months ago i probably would have <laughs> done way better than we've done but but it was also kind of like lulls six months ago right like there was a big lull to a certain degree like you could have been positioning yourself appropriately but there was like it wasn't booming like it was now kind of a situation you know um right i don't know i mean it's like i started working at this place like two years ago i was like the lockdown started kind of ending and um things started to heat up uh, I want to say like probably Pepe was like on ETH was like my first big hit of like this bear season. And um, then that just, I mean, right around that time, like ordinals were popping off and um, just got into all that stuff. And uh, all of a sudden it was like kind of like, you know, just fin finally getting gains after like the last cycle so uh and then it was probably wasn't until like october when just like brc 20s and everything just like ripped and um yeah i don't know man I'm trying to ride that wave right now yeah no there's definitely a lot of stuff that's going on i mean um 
Yeah, I, I like, dude, that's one thing that I, I really figured out. Like, this is uh, my third cycle now. And the first cycle, I went away and then came back. And uh, because I, I was like, oh, this was all a scam. That was a one time thing. That's it. Right. Boom, bust. And then like uh, second time I came back, I came back a little bit late and then made a little bit of money and then lost a decent amount of money. And then I was like, OK, I know what the fuck goes on in this space. And so I just was like, well, if I'm serious about this, you literally got to like push the chips. You got to double down while everybody's getting freaked out and leaving and like just take that opportunity to build something right um and so yeah no it's it's a good idea for sure but it's risky it's risky especially if you have a family and stuff uh finding like a, a source of income that's like steady because like a lot of these companies just start dropping like flies dude uh so and that's kind of what happened to me too to a certain degree uh like right before i started doing the orange cube stuff like all the people that i, I was employed with were like hey sorry we don't have funds anymore I was like, all right, Roger that. Good thing I've been working on my own thing, you know, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so like uh, you talk about like um, kind of, well, I guess, I guess there's like in ordinals right now, there's uh, only two that kind of come into mind when it comes to like curative collections or kind of like art houses, which is like counterfeit culture. And then you have like, um, the big god which is um do you know the name of it uh bitcoin art house yeah the bitcoin art house and then it's... you have the orange cube so what what's like uh what separates you over like the the other art houses or the other um collectives out there i to be honest with you i think plain and simple man it's, it's just the the art that we're trying to promote and kind of like the vibe that we're trying to promote um to a certain degree like really what my goal is with with orange cube is oh, okay let me back up a little bit like i absolutely love working with those guys bitcoin art house uh bit god is a good friend of mine um you know prism's really killer when with the stuff he's doing with counterfeit cold um they have different approaches to what they're doing right um, I think uh, Counterfeit Cult is really trying to onboard uh, a lot of like big blue chip names from like the ETH space or other uh, spaces in into Bitcoin, um, which is super cool. And then um, also Bitcoin Art House is kind of trying to do the same thing, but like they're kind of having this approach of like the hundreds, the idea of the hundreds, which is basically like where uh, BG and Bitcoin Art House essentially commission an artist to create a hundred one of ones um, that are then considered like profile pictures. Um, and so it's kind of like this interesting exploration of identity through the, the medium of like fine artists uh, and artists that are creating work on chain. Um, I think it's super cool, but like really what I, I'm trying to do is, is just completely uh, different as far as like my approach of uh, the artists that I'm trying to promote. Um, like I said, I'm trying to promote like for the most part, like no names. Um, I don't want uh, people that are like already blue ship darlings, um, to be entirely honest with you. Uh, I think some of my favorite artists, some of the best artists that I've seen are, are still relatively underground. And they it's because like maybe they weren't in the right place at the right time last cycle. Maybe they don't know how to promote their work appropriately. Maybe they're on the wrong chain. And they're just working their ass off for literal pennies on the dollar, right? And and they don't have the capability to like figure out how to negotiate this new tech or um, you know, have the funds to inscribe their work on chain. And so it's like I want to essentially go and, and handpick the ones that I believe that are are you know totally invested in their web3 career that, that i have seen through the bear market continuously be present and and hang out in this space people that um that are willing to put the time in uh pay the dues do the work enjoy the community as well that's another thing it's like bitcoin's got a completely different community so it's like if people don't vibe with bitcoin and the bitcoin col uh, collective and the culture that's being propagated here i don't think it's a smart idea for you to be messing around kind of putting your stuff on chain because this is not PC. This is not a little kid training wheel bullshit. Like this is not, this is like real world of grown, grown ass adult shit over here with big money on the line. Right. So um, our, our PG three, yeah. PG 13 rating is keep going well, but <laughs> what's up? 
I was just joking. I was saying our PG thirteen rating keeps going well. No, oh, just my just wife. PG-13? No, 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 no. I'm just kidding. Oh. But like, like you <laughs> said, like yeah, we're all a little un, you know, uncouth or you know, not as PC as some people come off to, especially on YouTube, a little more clean cut, etc. You know, that's an extension of the Ordinal Support Desk. Uh, but I've just gotten that feedback that you know, uh, maybe that would help us a little bit more with certain people or whatever. But it's just not us, right? So you know, maybe no. we we try to do it a little bit here or there. But yeah, it was just funny because. Um, yeah, it's something like we think about a little bit and then once we get chatting, it just goes out the window. So, well, and that's the thing is like, dude, I, like kind of like drawing back to like the culture that's being propagated with some of these like web three art houses that already exist in, in different chains. It's like they come from a traditional art background. So they understand how they need to essentially uh, curate their look like forward facing so it's inviting for these institutions to interact right um but ultimately at the end of the day uh these institutions don't give a fuck dude like uh these institutions are out here barely paying any attention um collecting things into you know a, not the permanent collection but like the encyclopedic collection which is like a totally different a uh, place for people to essentially collect art or institutions to categorically collect art, um, which just kind of shows you that they don't really consider what's happening here serious art. They just kind of think it's like a bunch of people dicking around with some JPEGs. And so I think the only way that we can really like um, create an impact and get these people to intentionally want to work with us and uh, take the Web3 art serious is if we create something that is a direct reflection of the culture, right? Um, something that is unapologetic, something that is like, you know, inherently in a certain way, like degen, right? Um, but like, but toe the line between like degen and like this idea that like degeneracy and this like degen culture is like a reflection of um, of not only uh, the art that's being created here, but like the market that exists here. Um, but like, uh, it's also kind of like self evidently cool in its own way, right? And so, if you can create something that like speaks to that, that taps into that culture and toes that line, I think you'll create a movement. And if you can create a movement, then you can grab their attention. So that's that's where my head's at with it, you know. I think to that point too of like like traditional art people critiquing the NFT space. Um, I kind of agree with what Elmo is saying because they their main critique is that people here in the NFT space don't really know about the digital art history, which is kind of like a two-edged sword in my opinion, because you know, they might say, you know, from Paul, like you know, Nam June Pai, Corey Archangel, or like Paul Clean what needed to be said about technology, you know, has already been said and which is kind of like untrue because what was true five, 10, let alone like 30 years ago when these artists, when these traditional artists were creating, um, doesn't necess necessarily mean what it means to be an artist now in the NFT space, right? Um, to create for a digital native audience uh, where you can own digital work. And all this originated from and is an extension of crypto culture. So it's kind of like, yes, I get what you mean, but also we are like looking at a new, not a new, like all art history is, it builds on top of what came before it. So it's not, it's cumulative in nature. Uh, uh, the, you can say like, it's, it's kind of in its nascency, how artists approach art here, but still it's, it's a reflection of the culture of like the internet culture and the NFT culture, which all kind of is an extension of crypto culture. So I, I get the critiques, I mean, uh, but also it's just, not in my, at least i mean i might just get it mm -hmm. but um but yeah i kind of like yeah. because I, I like totally like relish on the internet i be, basically i don't go outside right i almost knows this i'm a shut-in you know he he just talks about it but yeah i don't like internet to me is such a all the technology is such a interesting tool you know where you can like interact with people all over the world, but also like 
yeah, it's kind of like part of our generation, which is why I think people don't get it, which which is why I kind of get annoyed when people are like, oh no, you know, why don't your NFTs belong in like a physical art, you know, place on Super Chief? I'm like, really? Like, but it's made to be on the internet. Like, it's kind of like totally different. You're me, like imagine viewing the Sistine Chapel on your phone, that would be fucking like weird, right? Because you were made to view it in a museum, like in the chapel, like looking up, it's a whole new dif different experience. So when artists create work specifically to be viewed on, um, on screens, on mobiles, on laptops, especially like the stuff that I create are made to be viewed solely on your desktop. Uh, that's why you, if you're like viewing out on mobile, you won't get like full features because yeah, like, what are you going to get? It's just going to be really tiny. So uh, all of my games and stuff are made to be played on desktop. So I'm like, I don't know. It's kind of, I get their thing, but also I feel they're kind of afraid of like this technology and what's going to come after it with AR, with Unreal. what Unreal is, Engine is doing is fucking insane. Um, totally is going to be a game changer. And people don't believe it, but... You know, people didn't believe in internet. So what are you going to do? That, that's another thing that I found that I've always found really interesting with Tantan is the fact that like, I like all these artists that are out there like trying to get their work, you know, in like this beautiful displays and other things like that. And that's something that I'm very passionate about is like figuring out different ways to like uh, creatively display digital artists. But like Tantan specifically, every single time I broach this topic with her and I'm like, yo, can we do a display? Can we do an exhibition? She's always like, dude, my work is meant to be like viewed on a browser, you know? And I'm like, dude, that's so interesting, right? And I think that idea is is really unique and and like specifically speaks to like, this this new generation this full to refresh culture the ipad kids right like it's only natural that we slowly evolve from like you know throwing paintings and like you know our work up on a wall to like being able to access it in their phones and and maybe the generations right now don't understand that and and maybe they think it's kind of corny and you know well i can't put this in my you know on my walls and other things like that but like I think it's natural for people that have grown up on social media that like are literally like on the teeth of social media 24 seven to progress to something that, that would be digitally accessible and like, you know, bring them some sort of digital like uh, social clout as opposed to, you know, physical stuff on their walls, right? Because it just seems natural. Um, but yeah, Chan Tan is very passionate about that and I fucking love that. I, I also like want to like point out firstly it's it's not a new thing like the um there's like the net art people in the contemporary art world that explode this idea but also there's a gap I think in my opinion between those who have like learned to enjoy their computers as a place of like legitimate direct and authentic artist artistic experience and those who still like perceive that as conveying a mediated indirect experience of art you know like, like it's out there, like when you create um, like things on the internet and you know, it's, there is like a monumentality to it. Um, it's in public d domain accessible to everyone that all online artwork possess inherently. So it's kind of like, like from like two different generations, like, you know, trying to perceive art in a different way. So as I said, net art people, um, the net art movement would say, when a viewer looks at our art, we are inside his computer. And they would say that, you know, being inside someone's computer is like an honor for them. It's like you, when you're inside someone's computer, you, you're like occupying a mindscape um, in their like, you know, consciousness, which is again, an extension. That's, that's again, what my work is about, an extension of like seeing desktop and internet as an extension of like the mindscape of a consciousness. So it's kind of, but but still, you know, like the art world and the contemporary art world people, they're kind of still on like the fence about it. They said, oh, you know, this has already been explored in the internet, in the net art world, you know, what are you bringing new? I'm like, technology is changing every day. The way that we interact with technology is changing every day. How can you say that? Like, how can you say what, you know, what was said about like technology has already been said? 
that's just not true for me. So also sorry for rambling, but yeah. Well, that's good. We love your ramblings, Tantan. Yeah, I love Tantan's ramblings all the time. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> um, damn. Uh, I was going to ask, uh, fuck. sorry, I like completely lost train of thought looking at uh, the last call that I made, which was like Biao King Panda Head, the rune. Uh, crazy. 25 or like 30 a minute. And like now it's 131 a minute. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a, you know, it's crazy place here and there. So I was like, I got caught up in the moment. I'm like, yo. This is crazy. Yeah, it's like hard, like, to like not keep your eyes on like what's happening, especially in like these rune rune situations where it's like you could have the next Wanko Manko, um, and you <laughs> never know. <laughs> but the conversation, the topic is is about Orange Cubar and Tan Tan. Um, I don't know where to go from here because it's been a crazy yeah. few days degenerate with you guys on all these runes man it's been insane i almost sure been there the UTXOs, man make sure you split up those utxos oh of course oh, yeah. but like i don't know like we we were like in easy mode through brc 20s just like you know mint and shit just like oh this is a cool ticker and mint that and like but now it's like it's just expert mode like looking at volumes watching our plays like it's like it's fucking crazy right now it's fun i love it yeah but dude like this is like i said like i used to trade options on like on like small and micro caps which is crazy so it's like i this is the shit that i absolutely love um so yeah i, to I totally feel you on that i feel like this is even easier than that right like there are like certain Way technical easier. analysis that you can like you know uh, essentially rely on that can give you statistical probabilities of certain things like increasing in price and whatnot but like with uh memes there's a little bit of that but a lot of it's like check your timeline see what people are talking mm -hmm. about right? pretty it rolls off the tongue the right way or whatever yeah yeah, yeah. no it makes a chuckle fun. well i'm really yeah. loving that moma hat also mm -hmm. um so I, I see you did a bit of a research or you kind of did <laughs> so goosey though we kind of like uh you've kind of been in the trenches with us uh the whole past week shout out to elmo um yeah that's yeah. what i love about like elmo what you're curating the orange cube is like you're out there you're with the people you you don't just come by and it's like here's the pieces here's the art i'm gonna stop by this space i'm gonna stop by that space i'm gonna, you know you're like deep in the trenches like where like everything kind of happens like we got the support desk running 24 hours it's you know it's just like anybody comes and goes and yeah like the the way things are planning out with like the orange cube i see a bright future ahead not only because you're covering the underground artists like tan tan you're obviously doing the opposite of what everybody's doing um for example like counterfeit or like big guy they're going out for like these well-known artists or like kind of have like ex exposure you're covering what people haven't seen bringing a new spotlight bringing something new to the table rather than it's like oh this artist is from here and we brought him over here it's like it's the different it's like the complete opposite uh your approach to things and that's what i like to see like even in the underground hip-hop scene shout out the beautiful dog you just brought up he's <laughs> <laughs> so been, so been trying to get my attention this whole time. <laughs> it's all good but nobody yeah. wa nobody watches this long anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, I, I mean, yeah, like to, to kind of like wrap things up. Um, yeah, I think you're doing a great job, like just covering the underground artists. Hey, buddy. Uh, like that that's a lane that I was like looking to approach. Or like that's a lane that I would like to do, like curate a collective or like curate collections based on some underground artists from a variety of chains. I know Tezos has incredible artists, like very underground low-key work and it's like all html based it's perfect for like what happens in ordinals and i'm glad you're taking that initiative to like bring some of those artists over here because that's that's what i was looking at last year i'm like yo there's like the art is kind of trash low-key there's like crazy art in like different places such as tezos and they have like the html unlock uh so uh i'm just like glad you're actually like putting out 
putting out great quality content and for tan tan too like the pieces are crazy uh trying to wrap my head around like the creative process is insane i'm just like messing with a few things and i have no clue what's actually happening in the piece but it's like you get to learn from like each little thing you click like oh maybe this is connected over here and it's like the sense of exploration but you like tan tan you're killing it orange cube elmo you're killing it too um i don't know where to wrap this up but fucking everything's beautiful shout out, shout out to you <laughs> Dude, uh, that was a big thing is like I was talking to a lot of uh, like ordinals people and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to bring some like Tezos artists over and other things like that. And they're like, oh, that's great. But like Tezos, man, nobody likes to put their money on that chain and other things like that. Like the art's amazing and it's cheap. But like, what the fuck? And I was like, dude, I was like, no, I'm going to bring him to Bitcoin. And they were like, <gasps> like yeah. mind blown, you know, and it's it sucks because there's a lot of these artists out there that are like using the Tezos ecosystem as kind of like their main source of income, right? But they're only pulling in like a few hundred bucks like every few months and they have to continuously release work um, just to kind of reach those numbers. And ultimately at the end of the day, it's just like not sustainable and it's really sad to see. Uh, so I was like, yeah, dude, like why not bring them to an ecosystem where they can get a fresh base um, and, and help them try to explore that appropriately. So I'm excited, dude. I'm excited. Uh, but like, again, it's like, it's, it's not all Tezos artists. Like, like I said, I, I, I really want to work with Bitcoin artists. I think there's some really fucking cool ones out there. And I just really want to pull the best artists from like even Solana and some of these other chains um, over here and get their work immortalized forever on chain on the mother chain. You know, why wouldn't you? Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. You guys are sure. kind of filling a niche as like an independent, you know, uh, uh, music company or something like that right like you want to be in your own niche and doing your own style through and through so i, I really like that and just want to say thanks for coming to join us and looking forward to, to more work and uh, i was trying to pull up on ord io uh, tan tan's work I, I saw the tweet the other day but yeah i definitely want to poke around and look at it in more detail so looking forward to the the next things coming and thanks again for joining us yeah, yeah thanks thank for having so me much. and we are out Ask Cubicle, we're the voice the choice. Every story celebrated, make some noise from the West Worldwide.
cubicle with a voice to choice. Every story celebrated, make some noise from the West Worldwide.